Hi everyone, thanks for coming back to learn how to finish off your chains. I'm going to show you in this video how to make a clasp for the chain we made in the last video. Uh, and again, if you didn't watch that video, um, this basically is great practice for learning how to make loops in a proper way. Uh, you know, if you're not sure how to do that, check out that video and uh, you can learn how to make your loops even and centered and uh, make your coils tidy and look nice. Uh, so I'm assuming that uh, if, you're, if you're watching this, you either only need a clasp for a pre-made necklace or you've already done your chain and if you have, congratulations because it's not the easiest thing, it's a little tedious. So now I'm going to show you the most basic uh, clasp that I use. And I, I do this for um, a lot of my pre-made chains. Uh, I do this for leather cord ends, pretty much anything. You can use it on a bracelet, um, you know, or a necklace. It's very easy. I have a lot of customers who are elderly and they prefer this to a manufactured lobster claw. Uh, just because, um, you know, with arthritic fingers, they're easy to operate. You don't need help. Um, so a lot of people do appreciate that. So it looks simple, but um, it actually has worked out great for me. And so now I'm just going to share it with you. And again, it's super basic, so anybody can do this. Um, if you tuned into the last video, you know that this wire is 20 gauge. Uh, these lengths for the chain are three and a half inches so because I'm going to do this a little bit differently uh, on my last loop which is going to be the, the the ring end of the clasp so to speak uh, I'm going to give it a little extra uh, because one side's going to be bigger so I don't know exactly we'll go with five inches and then I'm sure I have enough um, one of the things I love about copper wire is that if you if you go too far and you cut too much, uh, it's not that big of a deal if you have to, you know, throw away a little piece. And actually, I'm going to show you too later on how to uh, incorporate those pieces and recycle them yourself uh, into other findings. So uh, if you find that you have pieces like this or even shorter pieces, you know, two inches or what have you, just set them aside. Uh, I use a Tupperware container and I collect all these things and then when I need just a little piece of wire I go see what I can find. Um, so you kind of can recycle it that way yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out using the same size loop and I always do this um, if I'm going to make a chain I make the, the end of the chain the clasp at the same time because then I know exactly where I was on my pliers these marks from the Sharpies eventually wear off. Okay, if you want to take it off, you can use rubbing alcohol and it comes right off. So they, the, the mark isn't permanent. It's not going to be there forever. So if I were to go on and do a few other projects and then come back, I wouldn't, you know, I'd have to remark them. So it's easier to just do it all at once. And we're going to start out the same way, making the first side of the basic loop at the same point on the plier, same size, and I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because I did it sort of in depth on my last video. Okay. Now your matching size loop is going to get attached to the, the chain in the same way that we attach the loops together. And I use the same number of wraps. I was using four on the links, so I'm going to use four again on the clasp just because I like it to be consistent. And again, pushing that wire over, not pulling it by the end because it won't behave for you if you do that. Okay, and now we're back at the same point, that same halfway mark that we were before. I'm going to squeeze that one down and around. It got away from me a little bit. 
And the very last one is not the one you want to mess up on, obviously. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to put our same bend in the wire again. Try to move these so you can see better. Okay. And then what I do is I always make this last loop a little bit bigger uh, just because I think especially for um, people who have maybe arthritic fingers or they have neuropathy issues it's just easier if you give them a little bit bigger target to aim for so for this loop I go all the way down to the very bottom to the biggest point on that round nose plier and we're just going to make that loop the same way It's just a little bit bigger so it's easier to find when you're holding it behind your neck <laughs> and then come back around same exact way that we did all of the other links Again, we get this far, clip that off. I'm going kind of quick here because all these instructions are on the video with the links that shows you the how to make the loop. File it off. And especially make sure you get this one filed properly because this is the one that people are going to be, they're going to have their fingers on it. You don't want them getting poked. Okay, and we're going to just press that wire down and close off that loop. Finish it off. Okay, so basically it doesn't really look a whole lot different than the rest of the chain. And it doesn't need to, honestly. Um, you know, in all the, the time that I've been doing this and the number of things that I've sold, uh, and I do shows, so I get to talk to customers face-to-face, -face, live, one-on-one. -on -one. I don't just... Um, I sell through my website and, uh, and uh, also on Facebook, but a lot of the time my customers I'm dealing with face-to-face. Um, so, and I have never had anybody even question the kind of clasp that I use on these necklaces. Um, so it, like I said, it works out really well for me. Okay. So that's that end. And now, um, for the hook end, I probably don't really need four inches of wire, but we're going to cut it there just because much easier to trim off the excess than it is to try to make this wire longer if you cut it too short. Now what I'm going to do with this, because it's dead soft wire, um, and remember I said you can work harden your wire to any hardness that you need. Uh, that's, what, that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to put a little fold, a little bend in each end of this wire, and I'm going to do that just so that I have a place to hold on to it. Um, now I have two sets of pliers. If you don't, uh, maybe a vise. Uh, you could actually use your round nose pliers to hold on to this too, but what we're going to do is we're going to just twist it. So you can see that if I didn't fold those wire ends over, it might have a little tendency to pop out of the, the jaw of the pliers. Um, and again, this is really difficult to show you because of where my camera is sitting. So I'm doing the best I can here with these. Um, but you will know, you'll feel the wire actually start to change. And you can sort of check, check for springiness uh, as, it, as it work hardens, as you twist it. Um, it will start to get stiffer and that's what we want is we want a little um, a little more stiffness in the wire because this really has to hold its shape okay so that should be good after you do this a few times and again make a bunch of these um, 
you know, just because practice is, is the best way to learn anything. Um, so now I'm going to trim that end off. And always where you have a raw end and it's going to show or be exposed in any way, file it off. And we're just kind of going to go, I'm slowly turning the wire between my fingers so that I catch the whole surface. Okay, it only takes a second. And it's probably not going to show up well on here, but um, it does make a difference in the way that your, your wire looks. And you want it to always look finished and nice. So just take a couple seconds and file that end of the wire off, okay? Now I'm going to take my, my little tiny micro chain nose pliers, which I love for this. Um, and this is probably going to be difficult to see, but we're going to grab the very end of the wire. And this is the only time that I can think of off the top of my head that I advocate really squeezing it. So you're kind of going to flatten that just a little bit. And the reason that we're going to do that is because I want to make a little tiny, and when I say tiny, I do mean tiny. We're going to make a little tiny curl in the end of this wire. Um, and I find that it not only does it stop it from being pokey, but it gives it a little more stability. And also when you, when you hook it on, uh, it gives it a little more leverage to stay hooked and stay closed which obviously is important. So I'm going to make a little tiny loop. I haven't quite got it all the way around. Like I said, it's hard to show you because it's so close to the camera. Okay, so I have a little tiny curl on there. So you can see flattening out the very end of that wire actually helps it curve around and lay underneath, kind of fold up underneath itself. And that's what we're looking for is just a little bitty curl like that. If it's not tight enough, you can go back and kind of give it a little squeeze. Do this carefully because if you push too hard, you'll end up with a big flat spot and that's not going to look as nice. So there's our little tiny baby curl. And then grab the round nose pliers. And what we're looking to do is put a loop on this. I shouldn't say a loop. I should call it a curve, really. So we're going to come all the way around so that it meets itself. And that's the shape that you're looking for. Just like that. And then again, I'm going to take the biggest part of the plier. I leave about, I guess it's about a quarter of an inch exposed. And we're going to wrap it back the opposite direction. And I kind of go over on this and I'll show you why. So this has gone right in line with the other curve. It's made sort of an eight. It's kind of bigger on one end. And this is training the wire to go where you want it to go. You want this to be a clasp that's going to stay closed. So by, by over bending, we're teaching the wire that we want it to go in this direction. We, we want it to stay closed. Okay, and then I'm going to trim off this end. Well, I guess that's about an eighth of an inch away from the bottom of that curve. And it's not real technical. It's not real specific. Mine don't. They're not all 100% the same size or the same exact shape. It doesn't matter as long as you get the general idea. I'm going to 
go all the way around, flip it over, file that end off. I don't know if you can see this or not see this, but what it does is it just gives the wire a little bit of a rounded end on it, so it looks finished. And then the same thing that we did with the other side, we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna pinch that little end and put that tiny curl back in. And the very last thing I do is I adjust it to my final shape. Okay, so that's the shape that you're looking for. That's gonna hold that necklace closed. Now, if you have a bench block, and this is a, you'll have to excuse my, <laughs> my old dirty bench block, but my other one is really big and really heavy and it doesn't fit here. So, um, so I have this one, which was a, an, an old, sort of a backup, just a chunk of stainless steel. Um, probably not the best thing to use because these little grooves from where this steel was cut on the machine, um, if you're hammering, <clears throat> they will pick up, copper will pick it up. So if you're going to use a bench block, it really should be a new shiny flat mirror finish one. But for the sake of demonstration, I opted not to drag it all the way in here. Um, but it, so this is a chasing hammer, so it has a rounded face. Um, although when I first started, I didn't have a chasing hammer. I just did this really carefully. Um, and just a little bit. Uh, you don't need to pound this. You know, we're not trying to flatten it out like like aluminum foil. We're just going to give it a few taps right where that curve is. And the reason that I like to do that is because it gives it just a little more stability. It gives it a little more hardness um, and it helps it stay, maintain that shape. Okay, and that's really all that's necessary is just a tiny bit. You can do the other end too if you want to. Uh, I don't find it's particularly necessary on something this small, but, you know, if you want to just be double sure, you can do that. Um, if you don't have a bench block, uh, you don't need to go out and buy a bench block for this. It really will be okay if you don't have one. Um, you know, you'll get to that later in your wire journey. So um, I know that when I first started, I didn't have any money. <laughs> So the less you have to buy, the better. So if you just have a regular hammer, just do it carefully, uh, you know, on a rock or whatever you have, a flat surface, something hard. Don't do it on your wooden kitchen table because you'll leave an imprint in the table um, and then you'll be mad and I can't be responsible for that. <laughs> so uh, now that you have your clasp, just take your pliers and open it out just a little bit. Okay, we just want it big enough opening to be able to attach this loop and then close it back up again and that's it that's the finish and that's how it looks put together super simple like I said practice makes perfect so go ahead and give that a try and see what you think. Um, the other option and what I do if I have a particularly heavy piece that I'm going to put on a chain like this, I will go up to an 18 gauge wire on the hook part. Uh, it doesn't need to go on the loop section because this isn't, you know, this really isn't going to come open. But if you want something a little heavier, um, you know, you can go up to an 18 gauge on this and I find that it doesn't really look out of place. You go any further than that, it's going to look a little bit funny with the chain, but an 18, um, I'll make you one real quick just because I have it right here. Same process. So we're going to file off the end quickly. I try to keep these videos short. Um, and still give you adequate information. So certainly, um, 
you know, your feedback is always welcome. Let me know, um, you know, if you need more repetition in these videos, if you need it to be longer, if you need me to slow down. Um, I won't know unless you tell me. So uh, let me hear from you. So again, I'm going to squeeze the end. Give it that curl. You won't be able to get it quite as tight with a bigger gauge of wire, but you can still close it off pretty well. Obviously, the, the bigger your wire is, the harder it is to get it to, to turn over in such a small space. And I put a little warble in my wire when I did that, so now I'm going to have to go back and flatten it out again. Happens to the best of us. Okay. And then down to the very bottom. Cross it over. And I find it's a good guide for me to, um, you know, to know where to, I had almost twice as much wire as I needed that time. Um, it's a good way for me to just kind of reference without having to measure everything um, and get these fairly consistent size-wise and shape-wise. And like I said, once you do a few hundred of these, <laughs> you get a little more familiar with the process. Um, you know, so if your first one doesn't work out and it's not perfect or, you know, doesn't go like you expected it to, don't freak out. Don't panic. Um, mine didn't either. This is really a game of practice and patience and repetition. Um, and I know I say that a lot, but I see a lot of people asking those questions about why can't I do this and why isn't this working for me and, you know, how come everyone else can do it? When I first started wire wrapping, I was doing this probably 40 to 60 hours a week, um, nonstop. And it still took me uh, over a year to make anything that I was comfortable selling. So it just it takes time. I'm just going to tap this. I know I'm off screen, but you've seen me tapping on a bench block before. It's not not that exciting. <laughs> so there's an 18 gauge wire as opposed to a 20 gauge wire. And that's the difference there. So you can see gauge wise, you know, it's not going to be an extreme difference. But like I said, if it's a heavy, heavy pendant, uh, you may want to go up a little bit in gauge. But that's that. That's a very simple clasp. You can use on, like I said, use it on necklaces and you can use it on bracelets. And later on, I'm going to show you how this basic shape works really well for an ear wire. Um, well, I have an ear wire video already. Not quite like this, but similar. So um, we'll get into different styles of ear wires maybe a couple videos from now. But anyway... There's your clasp. There's your finished necklace. I hope you try it. If you do, let me know. If you have questions, please ask. I will certainly help you if I'm able. Thanks, guys.